Hello, and welcome to the FP Innovation Smart Operator for Forestry presentation. This presentation is a summary of the Smart Operator for Forestry workshop, which is also offered to our member companies and their contractors. This presentation is intended to reach busy forest operations professionals who have the desire to decrease the energy intensity of their operations, but cannot find the time or opportunity to attend a workshop. If you see value in the message of this presentation and wish to apply this knowledge to your whole operation, please contact FP Innovations to schedule a workshop in your community. This presentation is an important first step in optimizing your logging operation's fuel efficiency. There are no shortcuts to success. Attention to detail separates the profitable logger from the logger who barely breaks even. Throughout this presentation, you will be introduced to various ideas, some old and some new to you. Ask yourself how you can apply this knowledge to better your operation. You can be assured that somewhere in Canada, there is a logger using the operational improvements presented here to grow their profits. Canada has 347 million hectares of forest land. About 68% of Canada's forests are coniferous, 16% are mixed wood, and 11% are broadleaf. Your operating conditions may seem to be unchanging, but they are not. Operating conditions that change over time and for which you need to adapt include slope or gradient, stem size, decay or disease, and rainfall amount and duration, to name a few. If you have been a logger for more than a decade, you have probably noticed the operating environment today is not the same as it was when you first went to work in the woods. Adapting your machines and your work methods in the woods is critical for achieving the best possible results. Smart operator training will highlight the cost savings that are possible through optimizing your maintenance practices, employing operating techniques that can save fuel and boost productivity, investing in operator training, purchasing machines best suited for your situation, and upgrading existing machines. What aspects of your daily operations need improvement? Take a moment right now and write down what it is you hope to learn today and what areas you need to improve in your operations. We will revisit this list at the end of the presentation. Our goal today is to help you better understand how various factors influence your daily operation and profitability. This presentation will give you the tools you need to measure these factors and will teach you how to act on this knowledge. Here's a question. Have you ever considered fuel reduction measures, participated in workshops on this topic, or discussed the topic with your employees or fellow operators? Using the practices described in this lesson will put money in your pocket. Just like finding loose change in the cushions of your couch, all you have to do is dig. How much can you save? Consider in this instance a medium-sized buncher operating in Western Canada. The machine operates 2,500 hours per year and consumes 44 liters per hour on average. If you reduce fuel consumption by 1%, you can save over $1,300 in a year. Reduce unnecessary engine idling by one hour per day, and you can save almost $1,000 in one year. Keep in mind that unnecessary idling costs you more than just fuel. We'll go into this in greater detail later. Improving machine uptime, or in other words, time for which the machine is available for work, can net you a potential $1,200 in the year. And the big one, production. Increasing productivity by 1% can improve your bottom line profit by $8,800. Put this all together and there could be an additional $12,000 in your pocket. That's just one machine. How many machines are you managing? Two bunchers, 
four skidders, four dangle head processors, and two log loaders. Add up the potential savings, $93,000 in possible savings for this one operation. It adds up quickly. It's okay to burn more fuel on an hourly basis if you get more wood for your efforts. Energy efficiency is a measure of how much wood you produce during a given unit of time, similar to how far a car can travel on a liter of fuel. While interesting, it doesn't directly give you a measure of fuel when you increase the distance traveled or the payload hauled, or in this case, the wood produced. Instead, it is more useful to think of fuel consumed per unit of production, or liters per meter cubed. A feller buncher might consume a liter of fuel per cubic meter, whereas a skidder may consume half or even a third of a liter per cubic meter. It is useful to think of your energy intensity in this way, as it allows you to rapidly scale fuel consumption with production. Throughout this presentation, we will be looking at how to measure energy intensity and how you can use this knowledge in managing your logging operation. A sharp logging supervisor will keep track of productivity and fuel consumption. In this example, the machine consumes the same amount of fuel per hour, but production varies dramatically between days. The energy intensity, or liters per meter cubed, shows the result. Why? On June 7th, the operator chose to use the multi-stem function, but not on June 12th. Why? Was the operator unwilling to switch the feed roller to the multi-stem configuration? Was the option to do so forgotten or not considered? Later in this lesson, we'll discuss tips for optimizing this phase of production. How about when you compare the results from two machines? Take these two similar feller bunchers, same model, but Unit 2 is one year older and has more hours on the unit. If you were only tracking fuel use, you might think Unit 2 had an engine problem. If you were only looking at pace of work or production, you might think the operator of Unit 3 was slower or less skilled. In this case, energy intensity is the same. Clearly, some intervention from the supervisor is in order. An investigation found that Unit 3 had lower production due to a faulty joystick control system that made the machine slow to respond to operator inputs. How do you capture machine defects? Are you quick to repair? Failure to act on basic repairs can cost you dearly. We'll dive deeper into maintenance and machine tracking later in the lesson. In the meantime, let's look at your challenges. Let's look at the elements of success. You may think you're a logger just doing your job, getting the wood to the mill. Consider this. You are an essential element in a very complex supply chain. Without your expertise, the truckers can't earn their living. The mill owner, who has invested millions on equipment, may go out of business, and the men and women who work at the mill will not earn a living without you delivering the goods. Your knowledge as a professional is critical to the success of the whole operation. You must combine that knowledge and your skill to ensure worker safety in a complex, ever-changing, and dangerous environment. Cut the wood, skid, process, and load it on the truck. Or, perhaps you're using harvesters and forwarders in a mixed hardwood stand in the Maritimes, or cable logging on the coast of British Columbia. However you get wood on the truck, the following are depending on you. The truckers, the people at the mill, your community, the people building their homes. You must be knowledgeable about the forest company's policies, provincial and federal regulations, your personnel, and the capabilities of your equipment. As well, you must minimize your impact on the environment and the land you work on. You must be skilled in finances and understand the fine print in your contracts. You must also understand what the mill has specified for each log sort. And on top of this, you must be able to manage a diverse staff. Can you do all this yourself? Have you considered delegating any of these tasks? It is a complex job, and this presentation touches only a certain aspect of running a logging business. Consider using FP Innovation's Diag4 tool to help you get a handle on it all. 
and attending an FP Innovations Business Skills Workshop. Safety training is an ongoing need, and we all know the consequences of neglecting this responsibility. Look to industry associations and provincially-led safety initiatives and workshops to keep your approach to this task new and relevant to the changes happening in the woods. Without numbers or sound business intelligence, what are you basing your decisions on? What you've always done? What your competitors are doing? A fellow contractor who just went out of business? Like it or not, without good business intelligence, you are flying blind. Consider help in the office. Get someone to crunch the numbers. This is essential before you sign the harvest contract and as you work your way through the contract. Your job is complex. Take a moment right now and write down which parts of the job you could do better. And then make a note to yourself how you can go about improving that part of your business. We encourage you to revisit this list at the end of this series of presentations. In this lesson, you have been introduced to the changing forest environment, are you changing with it? The impact that best operating practices can have on profitability. The need for the best possible business intelligence and the need to act on this intelligence. How energy intensity, combining leaders consumed with productivity, can be the scorecard you need to improve your operation. How attention to detail separates the marginally profitable logger from the highly profitable one. Join me in lesson two where we explore how energy intensity affects your bottom line and what factors influence an operation's energy intensity.